Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. This is the second episode of How Is It Crafted, which is going to be looking at rare items that players submit to me, and I'm going to go through how the items have been crafted. This is looking at an Uber Elphus Howl. This has most of the same mods as Elphus Howl, but with much higher magnitudes on them. This is going to grant plus four to the level of socketed aura gems, assuming that they have the AOE tag, which almost every or every aura ash gem does. Additionally, it's going to have tier 1 spell suppression on the non-budget version, the budget version is going to forgo that. It's going to have the Deafening Essence of Loathing exclusive 10% mana reservation efficiency of skills, and then it's going to have the Eater of Worlds implicit 12% mana reservation efficiency of skills, or a little bit lower on the budget versions. All in all, it's essentially Alpha's Howl, but with the magnitudes of the mods increased quite a bit, and with a couple of extra little bonuses on it, like having life, and also having critical strike chance for spells or some different Searing Exarch implicit instead. A quick note, RMR is mana reservation efficiency. I'm going to use the term RMR to discuss this stat. This is a habit, this is because this stat used to be a similar but different stat called reduced mana reservation effect. This is like WED, which stood for weapon elemental damage in the past. Now that is always termed elemental damage with attacks. The old name is stuck amongst a lot of veteran players, and so you will often hear this stat referred to as RMR. So what makes up this helm? Firstly, you have a suffix tier one spell suppression. This can be rolled normally and is available on dexterity bases only by default, although with recombinators, it can be found on other bases. Now this mod can be found on hybrid bases such as dexterity and intelligence hybrid helms, but it's twice as rare on those bases as it is on a pure dexterity helmet. The next suffix is 10% RMR, and this comes from a deafening essence of loathing. The next suffix is plus two to the level of all socketed aura gems, which comes from an essence of delirium. The next mod is a prefix, Veiled AoE, plus 2 to the level of socketed AoE gems and 10% increased AoE as a hybrid mod. This has a couple of sources, Ashling Unveil, Veiled Chaos Orb, and as a drop. It has Benchcrafted Life. Now something that would be really interesting, those of you that watched episode 1 will notice that this is very similar to what was discussed in episode 1, and hopefully this similarity is something that will help you design your own achievable crafts as well. Then we have the Implicits, 12% mana reservation efficiency, which is a perfect tier Eater of Worlds mod, and 36% spell crit, which is a grand tier Exarch mod. As always, your first point when you're trying to reverse engineer how something was crafted. Which of these mods are the hardest to craft? How do we get those first? Or alternately, how do we not destroy them when we've got them? Now we're going to be using dexterity bases only in this video. In the non-budget craft, this dramatically reduces the cost of hitting spell suppression, compared to using dex int bases or dex strength bases, or especially compared to using pure strength bases, where you have to graft across a spell suppression roll using a recombinator. In the budget version, it actually doesn't offer that benefit, but it offers a different one, and that is that you have a slight chance to accidentally hit spell suppression, which is a really nice bonus if it happens to happen for you. Lion Pelt is the best helm, and you need to have item level 85 plus to roll tier 1 suppression. Sinner Tricorn and Silken Hood are close behind, and everything else is trash, miles behind on base evasion. So for our suffix mods, we want to get spell suppression, we want to get RMR, and we want to get them together. How are we going to do this? So in any other league, you'd be capped at one essence mod per item, but recombinators break many checks and balances on crafting. We're going to use this soon, but not actually at the first step. For now, we're going to get the two cheapest mods together. We're going to start applying deafening essences of loathing to helmets. Now, you might by miracle hit tier 1 suppression. If you do, fantastic, you can skip this entire step. But normally you won't. Normally you're going to have the deafening essence of loathing in conjunction with other suffixes and also potentially prefixes. At this point, you're going to want to keep annulling the item until you've got one suffix only, and that suffix is the deafening essence of loathing mod. Now, you're also going to want to trade for or create one suffix rare items that have tier 1 suppression on them. Now, if you need to create these yourself, you want to roll them as magic items. It's going to cost you an average of 80 alterations to hit tier 1 suppression. Then once you've got that, you want to regal them. And then if you end up with a suffix on it, you want to try and remove that. You can either remove it through an orb of annulment or through a suffix to prefix beastcraft, whichever is cheaper at the time. Note that you may need to use multiple annulment orbs because you might accidentally hit a prefix as well. Once you've done this, you want to put a benchcraft on the item, and I'm just going to suggest putting a low tier dexterity intelligence hybrid craft on it. There's a little bit that's still unknown about some of the nuances of how recombinators work in conjunction with adding additional mods. We don't want an additional mod to be added, and we don't know whether the dexterity intelligence blocks dexterity mods and intelligence mods, but there's a reasonable chance it does. In any case, it's a very cheap step to craft this on, so it's worth your while doing it. 
We've done this slightly differently to how we've done other things in the past. The reason for that is that spell suppression is very cheap to craft by itself, and that's why we're using pure dexterity bases. 80 alterations is fine, you don't mind losing that to an annul. Because we don't mind losing this mod, we're actually okay with regaling the item and then taking that risky attempt to make it back into a one mod rare. That's our step one. Once you've done this, it's a 44% RNG chance to get both mods on one item. And so at that point, you'll end up with uh, spell suppression, mana reservation efficiency, and if you have a third mod on it, it will be the dex int mod, which is very easily removed. You can just go to the crafting bench and say, remove all crafted mods, and that only costs you a scouring orb. Note that you've got to not apply the scouring orb to the item, you have to do it through the crafting bench. Exactly the same process is used to get spell suppression and the aura mod. This is exactly the same thing, but it does cost a little bit more because those delirium essences are twice as expensive as the loathing ones. Okay, now we have a budget alternative. Here, you're going to skip those steps, and instead you're going to start with a one mod loathing helmet and a one mod delirium helmet. So you've just got the two mods you care most about, and we're skipping out on the spell suppression. Again, you want to benchcraft dexterity intelligence on both and recombine them. You're going to skip the next step, However, you're going to need to fill suffixes on the item at some point. We're going to do this immediately by the use of an Eldritch Icor followed by an Eldritch Exalted Orb. Now you'll have no control over what your third suffix is with this, and so that's the consequence of going budget. You're going to end up with a worse item, but you will end up with something that keeps the core functionality, which is 2 to the level of socketed origins and 10% mana reservation efficiency of skills, and you'll still be able to do more later on to improve the item. Lastly, you want to use a low tier Eldritch Icor here. Ideally, you're going to use a lesser one, and that's something that will help you later on. It'll give you more flexibility at a later stage. So now our goal on the non-budget version of the craft is to get all three suffixes together. Now here, we've got one item that has two suffixes. We've got another item that has two suffixes. Here, it's just another case of Recombinators. 35% to win and 50% to get one of your bases back, 15% to destroy both of them. You do not want to benchcraft an additional mod this time. The numbers don't work out in your favour, and whilst there are some complex strategies involving what's termed influence blocking, they're not going to be useful here. Now the next step is expensive. The next step costs just over two exalts per try, and is about one in three to succeed. So on average that's going to cost you six and a half exalts, but you might be unlucky and fail a one in three chance often. Over one percent of people that attempt this craft will fail this step 11 times in a row, so just be aware of that before you start it, Maybe you'll decide that you want to go the budget route instead, and that's perfectly fine. So a Veiled Mod Reminder, we're going to be using Veiled Chaos Orbs here in conjunction with suffixes can't be changed. Now before you unveil a mod on an item, you can benchcraft a mod that shares a mod group with an undesired Veiled Mod. This will ban some unwanted mods. For Helm suffixes, you can't block anything that has huge weighting, but you can and should block one of life or mana. This can be low tier. If you unveiled the item on the left here, you'd have about a 32% chance to get the mod that you want. And if you unveil the item on the right, and the only difference being that it's got Benchcrafted Life on it, that'll go up to about 35%. So it's about a 10% improvement in your odds. This costs less than a Chaos, and so obviously you want to do it. You're going to be using Suffixes Can't Be Changed and Veiled Chaos Orbs or Ashling Unveils. Both of these will work, and you must reapply the Suffixes Cannot Be Changed metamod on a failure. This is going to be over and over again. You're going to then Benchcraft Life whenever you can. This is going to keep going until you get that AoE Gems mod. Occasionally you might find yourself in a 6 mod situation. At this spot, Harvest has you covered. Harvest, reforge an item, keeping all suffixes is what you want here. Now we do have a budget alternative to these steps, and that is to make the Exarch dominant uh, via the use of an Eldritch Ember. Now you may you need to use a higher tier Eldritch Ember than you used when you used an Icor earlier in order to apply an Eldritch Exalted Orb. And then once you've done this, you're going to apply Eldritch Chaos Orbs until you have a reasonable life roll. Uh, in the 6 mod case, you're going to need to use a Risky Eldritch Annul. So if you've got life and two other prefixes, you're then going to need to use a Risky Eldritch Annul to get rid of one of them. Then you want to Benchcraft plus one to the level of socketed AoE gems, and you've still got yourself a really good helmet there. Final layer of the puzzle is going to be getting your implicits again. 318 made Grand Embers and Icors cheap. They're not free, but 50 of them for an Exalt is pretty cheap. 1 in 70 Grand Icors to hit, to hit Grand Tier RMR. Once you've got that, you want to elevate it twice to Exquisite Tier. This is going to be a case of applying an exceptional ember, then spamming orbs of conflict until you have exquisite tier RMR, alongside a greater tier X arc mod. Now in my experience this averages about 6 orbs of conflict, but RNG is heavy on this step and we really don't know if 6 is right, that just feels right to me. Next you want to replace the X arc mod with a random exceptional one, and then you want to elevate using the orbs of conflict again until you have a perfect tier of your RMR implicit. 
This again is RNG heavy and we don't know the odds. Again, in my experience, this step takes about 10 more orbs of conflict. So you're looking about 16 orbs of conflict and about two or three exceptional Eldritch Icors here, as well as about 70 grand Eldritch Embers. Now, once you've done this, you want to get a decent Exarch mod on the item. If you want to be cost effective, then you want to spam Grand Embers. If you're okay with spending 10 times as much for just a tiny sliver more power, then you can spam Exceptional Embers instead. For that mod, the choice is yours. And that's how it was crafted. If you've got any comments or questions, definitely fire away below, and I am still taking submissions in my Discord for new items that people would be interested in seeing in this series. I will try and do something different that doesn't use prefix locking or suffix locking followed by Veiled Chaos, and we'll discuss that in another video.